Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm excited to be joined again this week by my friend and business partner, Mr. Michael Vincent, Mr. Podcaster Extraordinaire. Uh, we work together on fuel reduction, emissions reduction, plastics waste reduction, and we have these shows every week on sustainability topics. How are you doing, Michael? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. I got to show you something. Okay. Check, check that out. Oh, yeah. Believe. <laughs> right? That is a great mug right yeah. there. My, uh, my daughters uh, got that for me today, believe it or not is my birthday oh happy birthday there you go the 21 big, years old this weekend I'm gonna fill with beer. yeah you're gonna, go, you're gonna go out on the town yeah 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 i'm gonna uh as soon as we're done recording here i'm gonna make more sales calls <laughs> <laughs> well at least go to the store and get yourself a cupcake or something I, you know, I, I'm gonna. Go, I might do that because I have to go to Home Depot to pick up screen because I got to put rescreen my back porch. Okay, you got to do that every once in a while. It's been about eight years, so it, it needs it. You know, right? Well, happy birthday! Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. What do we got on store for uh, the folks today, my friend? I hear there's a little a test maybe or some education going to happen. Is that right? Absolutely. You know, our big topic for today is, do you know your colors of hydrogen? You know, I thought it was, I thought it was colorless and odorless. <laughs> Not according to this research. Is that right? Well, I do think it's colorless. What it is, is that what is the nickname for the certain kinds of hydrogen? And, I got you. Uh, so I, as far as I know, there's just like green is what I thought. Right. There's either not green or green. Right. No, I guess, I. you know, that's honestly where I was at in my yeah. knowledge of this subject. I'm just right. such a deep expert on this. I thought it was either green hydrogen or regular hydrogen, but apparently there's a lot more varieties than that. So it's kind of like the different, I mean, there's like biofuel and there's renewable fuel. They come from the same sources. The process is a little bit different. So the end product is different. So that's kind of the same thing here, right? The H2 at the end is still just H2, right? <laughs> if I'm still right, hydrogen, right? right. Hydrogen's H2, isn't it? I think, right? It's H, I think. Isn't it, it just H, H on the on the uh, periodic table? H, I think. Man, we are we are we are idiots. I'm I'm an idiot. Well, I'm not smart. no, I'm gonna look it up here. Periodic table. But it matters H2. It's H2. It's two of them. The gas is two of them. Hydrogen oh. is one, but gas is two, two combined. Now, see, you, you're you already showing you know more about this than I do. So am I exempt from the color quiz? <laughs> you're exempt from the color quiz. <laughs> All right. I Actually, I, I have the answers right here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't think I could stump you on it since you did a little research on this before we got together. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, there's different colors that, well, they're called different things like green hydrogen. Right. Okay. So let's just start there. So green hydrogen is hydrogen that is made via electrolysis, right? Which is basically zapping the hell out of water molecules and making them separate. But the power or energy in order to perform that electrolysis, it comes from a green source like wind or solar. Right. So if that power comes from something else, it's a different color of hydrogen. That's called, yeah, it's called yes. green hydrogen. It doesn't come out with a green tint, but it's called green hydrogen. Yeah, like in the you know the old uh, cartoons when someone would crop dust you, it came out like green. Yeah, <laughs> Ren and Stimpy, for instance. <laughs> do you remember the uh, crop duster on Independence Day? I do. Yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> who's not going to remember? <laughs> Randy Quaid, I think. Oh, His brother. Yeah. Dennis Quaid. No, it's Randy Quaid. Randy Quaid, yeah. Yeah. Um, Dennis Quaid was from Hoosiers. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> or not Hoosiers, but uh, 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 far and away. 
Go ahead. Far and away. Yeah. Or running away. Running away. Right. Right. When they were the 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 cyclers and stuff like that, they were cutters at University of Indiana or whatever. Or Indiana. Anyway, doesn't matter. Go ahead. Yeah, Randy Quaid. Tell you, so, did, did you go out and see the Bob Marley movie? Not yet. I haven't. Okay. Mm -mm. All right. Not yet. Um, yeah, I'm trying to. I've read a bunch about it because I want to know exactly what time period we're talking about here. So I'm not expecting the right thing because I'm a a bit of an aficionado. A big, you know, he's my hero. One of my heroes. Um, yeah, he's on your wall behind you. He's on my arm right here. There's oh, one love. That, wow. The, the bar. The music from the phrases give thanks and praise to the lord and i'll feel all right right here on my on my arm from his song one love so yeah wow wow um yeah so apparently it's like uh 76 through 78 is the time frame that we're talking about there so it's kind of skips past all of the the cia and the kgb and and uh castro and all those issues and that they had back you know before the shooting and all that other kind of stuff where they tried to murder him and so on you know, yeah. I think it's post uh, that stuff. I think it's him coming back and it culminates with the one love um, concert. Right. I think is, is I think that's what it is. Anyways. Yeah. I, won't I will go. Away. See I won't give it away. But we went out and saw it. Um, yeah. Good. Yeah. It's good. It's good. It's a good movie. Cool. It's a Excellent. good movie. I won't give anything away. So, awesome. uh, well, there's other colors of hydrogen, right? I mean, not really, but in, <laughs> how they're called so there is also gray and blue hydrogen Ooh. and those it says in this article from the week magazine it says gray and blue hydrogen are produced by splitting methane into carbon dioxide and hydrogen with the carbon dioxide captured and stored in the latter case blue so when the blue, when you do blue, you're capturing the CO2 as well as splitting methane into carbon dioxide and hydrogen. So there's gray, gotcha. there's blue, there's green, right? Yep, got it. Uh, there's another. Are there color. more colors? There are actually. Are we talk? Is this like Roygibiv? <laughs> <laughs> like the the rainbow? <laughs> it's a uh, boy. It's it's interesting because. There's two others. Um, gold hydrogen. And that is also sometimes known as white hydrogen. Wait, gold. Gold hydrogen. That has a nice ring to it. It's got to be expensive. Right? Or it's worth a lot. I don't know. But gold hydrogen, also sometimes known as white hydrogen, according to the article, is a naturally occurring gas trapped in pockets under the ground in much the same way as oil and natural gas. Oh, okay. So there, yeah. All right. So you drill underground and you find packets of natural pockets, sorry, of naturally occurring, occurring gold hydrogen. And therefore it's gold or white because there is no contaminant release in the production of it because it's already there. That's right. kind it looks of like it's there. Like you just pull it out and it's ready to go. It's just there, ready to go. But you got to go get it. So the energy you spent to go get it's got to be considered, right? I mean, yep. <laughs> yeah, true. It's like car batteries, you know, for the EVs. They don't just naturally occur. <laughs> <laughs> they don't? No, no, no. <laughs> Not that I know of. Not that I, I've ever, I've ever experienced. But you know, there's, you, you, there's black and pink, right? Oh yeah, there's black and pink. That's right. And you know what? In the way the article goes, they go in the wrong order, my friend. It should be black, gray, blue, green, pink, gold. Because black write. is when you just you, you just straight write. out burn you just straight out burn coal and you get hydrogen. That's black, right? So that's like that's the worst, right? Yeah. And then it gets progressively a little bit better. It gets better and better and better, and you know. I would think green, well, maybe pink, then green, then gold. Just because, you know, I mean, people, you know, nuclear energy is considered a green energy, but, you know, it only took us 20 years to figure out how to store the waste in the ground. <laughs> so, right. you know, There's, how green is that? <laughs> you yeah. can pretend it's green all day long, but uh, I'm buying it. <laughs> nuclear waste, I don't think is green. 
No, that's what I'm saying. You know, you remember they're going to store it in the Yucca Mountains, right? And they couldn't do it because it wouldn't contain it and stuff. So it spent another 20 years studying, and it's like under some salt flats and stuff in New Mexico somewhere. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> no, that's not exactly green. Not exactly what I'd call green. No. Energy. No. But, but yeah, yeah, so they they discovered a huge amount here, right? Yeah, in France, apparently, right? Yes, yes. In the northern part of France, in the Lorraine coal region, uh, northeast France, they found what they believe is 250 million tons of naturally occurring hydrogen, which would be enough to provide as much energy as the UK's lord largest oil field and may represent the largest naturally occurring deposit of the gas ever found. They believe there's enough there to power the entire Earth for two years. Wow. My goodness. You know, and speaking of that, I watched this show, this documentary, and um, it was about hydrogen cars. Yeah. And I was trying to remember if it was Greenland or Iceland. I do believe it's Iceland. I poked around a little bit. I can remember what the show was. I mean, which country the show was about. But anyways, I poked around a little bit and on exploratorium.edu, um, it says Iceland also uses a great deal of hydropower from the network of rivers and waterfalls that crisscross the island. Now researchers are using hydrogen to run the nation's cars and fishing trawlers. Nice. Yep. Nice, nice. Well, oh, that's Iceland? Iceland. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of that. I mean, those are, in my mind, it seems to me that this, like Iceland, Greenland, and over into the Scandinavian countries is like really far advanced in green technology, right? I mean, that's like, I mean, it's the homeland of Maersk and all that other kind of stuff. But I mean, there, those are where the partnerships for really the the methane care or the the uh, ammonia carriage of hydrogen and so on and so forth, and that studies and partnerships are really happening in those particular areas <clears throat> over there, which is really cool. Right. <clears throat> the There's, only tricky part with hydrogen is it's extremely explosive and flammable. Really? <laughs> yes. So you have to have static containment. That was this. I learned this in the documentary. They have to have static pads on the fueling stations that get rid of any sort of static charges. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought, yeah, yeah. not static versus dynamic. Static electricity. You have to keep the static electricity. With, yes. Yeah, like, like you can't fuel and talk on your cell phone for sure. Right. <laughs> right. You don't want to be flicking a flint stone while you're filling up with hydrogen. See, that's the part that that gets me is is do we really want to trust the average Joe Schmo running around to just start dispensing hydrogen all over the place? I mean, has nobody seen Zoolander, the movie where <laughs> <laughs> they, they die in a freak gasoline accident. <laughs> oh man! A freak gasoline fight accident. <laughs> no, and there have been a couple of stations out there in California that are hydrogen that did have a fire. You know uh, that made the news. That um, you got it requires special containment. You know to make sure that it doesn't just. Well, if you spark and you've got hydrogen there, it's gonna. Oof, you know, well, yeah, for instance, you, you really shouldn't put it in a huge balloon and, and like traverse the ocean and then try and land. <laughs> I think somebody like, should try it, though. Like the Hindenburg. <laughs> the Hindenburg, exactly. Yes, yeah. that was not a good uh, flight. No, that was, well, the end, the flight was great. It was the, you know. The landing the, was bad. It's the landing that'll kill you. Right. Yes. <laughs> it's not flying in the air. It's like the Butch landing. Cassidy and the Sundance kid when they're standing on the on the ledge and he goes, what's the matter? He said, I can't swim. And he goes, you idiot. The fall's going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> when he won't jump in the river, he's like, who cares if you can't swim? We're going to die when we hit the ground. Who Just cares? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, there's some interesting things happening in the world of sustainability, including hydrogen. You know, a lot of no, there really is. So let me give you this. I've got a quiz for you, right? So, Iceland's one of the m most percentage of using hydrogen in their vehicles, et cetera, right? Yeah. Okay. So in tw 2022, 15,000 new hydrogen vehicles hit the road. Two thirds of those, a full 10,000, 
were in one country? You got a guess? 10,000 in one country. Ooh. And that's two thirds of all the hydrogen vehicles that hit the road. Mm -mm -mm. I'd have to say India or China. Yeah. It, yeah. Right. So yeah, Southeast Asia, it's, it's uh, South Korea. That's interesting. Which is, which is really interesting. That's from uh, hydrogeninsights.com. Uh, gives us that for the world. Yeah. That's, wow. uh, that's where it is. So South Korea is getting pretty progressive on having hydrogen. Well, interesting, interesting. Well, I was lucky enough to work in Southeast Asia and I developed a love of Thai food while I was over there and uh, it never has left. <laughs> um, I think my voice is coming across bad right now, is it? Yeah, it is coming across a little bit weird. So I'll just, <laughs> I'll put a wrap on this one. So um, thanks for listening or watching everybody. We have a lot of fun doing these sustainability topics. And we will see you again on the next one. Take care, everybody.